If you've got a P0100 to P0104 fault code for a mass airflow sensor circuit malfunction, don't get put off by the prospect of circuit testing. I'm here to take the faff out of testing your math, because I'm going to run through all the diagnostic procedures required to accurately identify the cause of math sensor faults. Don't forget to like and subscribe to help out the channel. Hi everyone, Tim here again with another video on automotive sensor diagnosis. But before we get into the video, I have one thing to ask. We've noticed that the vast majority of you watching right now aren't subscribed to our channel. We really enjoy creating content and sharing our knowledge with you, so all we ask for in return is for you to please help us out by hitting the subscribe button. This small act will support us massively by helping the channel grow and ensuring we can keep creating better and better content in the future. Thanks for your support and let's get cracking. This time the culprit is the mass airflow sensor. When this goes faulty, you'll have everything from poor engine performance and rough idle to complete non-start of the vehicle, as well as fault codes P0100, P0101, P0102, P0103 and P0104 indicating a fault with the MAF sensor circuit. To understand why these faults occur, we need to look at how the sensor functions. As its name implies, the mass airflow sensor is responsible for measuring the amount or mass of air that flows into the engine's intake manifold to be used in the combustion cycle. It is located in between the air filter and intake manifold and contains a protruding heated wire or film element which is cooled as air flows past it. The sensor monitors the change in this element's temperature and converts it into an electrical signal which is then passed to the ECU. Depending on the sensor design, the signal can either be analog or digital. In a digital sensor, the airflow is measured by a change in the frequency of this signal, whereas in an analog sensor, the airflow is measured by a change in the signal's voltage, with the voltage increasing as the airflow does. The ECU then uses this signal, along with information from multiple other sensors, to calculate the optimal air-to-fuel ratio for efficient combustion. When the signal from the MAF sensor is outside the ECU's set parameters for a certain amount of time, a fault code is produced and the check engine light will appear. Digital and analog sensors are set up in different ways, with the general rule being analog sensors have a 5 volt high reference supply and digital sensors have a 12 volt supply which is fused. Both will also contain a low reference or ground and a signal wire. In this video, we will be looking at 5 volt supplied analog MAF sensors and these typically have a pull-up signal circuit. A quick word of warning, these sensors can also have 4, 5 or up to 8 wires at their connector, depending on the sensor design. This will be because the IAT, or intake air temperature sensor, is integrated into the MAF. So make sure you consult your vehicle's wiring diagram to identify the correct terminals before going mad with the multimeter. Now the codes P0100 to P0104 can be caused by a variety of faults, both mechanical and electrical. But as the code descriptions imply, the mass airflow sensor itself is likely to blame. These sensors are notorious for being affected by contamination buildup due to the vast amount of air passing through them on every trip you take. Pollen, dust and other debris in the air can get stuck on the sensor's sensitive components and cause the fault codes and symptoms to occur. That being said, these fault codes can also be caused by components other than the MAF sensor, so it's worth ruling out some of these first before focusing on the sensor. Checking for obvious damage or blockages in the intake or leaks in vacuum lines is a good place to start, as well as all of these checks. If all of these check out OK, then let's rule out the sensor and wiring with a few simple circuit tests. We'll start by ruling out the sensor. To do this, we'll check it is receiving the correct voltage, has a good ground, and is able to produce a good signal to the ECU. Turn the ignition off and remove the sensor connector and check for any corrosion or damaged terminals. Then use your vehicle's wiring diagram to identify which terminal corresponds to each circuit. Setting your multimeter to DC volts, check the ground connection by putting the red probe on the positive battery terminal and the black probe to the ground terminal in the connector. This reading should be battery voltage of around 12.6 volts. Then move the red probe on the high reference power supply terminal at the sensor connector and the black probe on battery negative. You should get a reading of around 5 volts indicating a good permanent power supply. Finally, we'll test the signal circuit. First check the static voltage with the sensor unplugged by moving the red probe to the signal terminal which in a pull-up circuit should also be 5 volts. Now plug the sensor back in and back probe the signal wire at the sensor connector. Turn the engine on and observe the voltage. 
it should fluctuate in line with any change in the RPM, with the voltage increasing as the engine speed does. If you have either a P0101 or P0104 fault code, then it is worth carrying out these checks whilst wiggling the wiring loom from the ECU to the sensor to rule out an intermittent failure with the loom or its connectors. However, if all these readings check out OK, then you can safely assume that the fault is being caused by a bad MAF sensor. Before replacing the sensor, check the element for damage or contamination by removing it from the intake manifold or airbox and inspecting the filaments inside, which should be completely clear of any dirt. If you can see visible debris on them, then you will need to spray them clean using a proper mass airflow sensor cleaner. It is important that you do this with the sensor removed from the vehicle, as well as using a specific MAF cleaner. This is because the sensor is extremely sensitive and if any residue is left on the filament, then it could cause the same issues you are trying to rectify. After the sensor has dried, refit it back to the vehicle and retest. If the fault still persists, then the sensor is internally faulty and will need to be replaced. If you found that any of the voltages differed from the desired ranges when testing the circuit, then the fault will lie with either the wiring loom from the ECU to the sensor or with the ECU itself. These results will either be higher or lower than the expected voltage, and usually the type of fault code you are experiencing will mirror this. For example, a P0102 indicates a low input within the MAF circuit, so when conducting the voltage checks, you will have a reading lower than expected. This fault is usually caused by a short to ground or high resistance within the circuit, whereas a P0103 indicates a high circuit input and is usually caused by a short to voltage. So, if you did get a bad reading when testing at the sensor connector, then you need to identify if the cause of this is within the wiring to the sensor or the ECU. To do this, conduct the same test as before, but this time back probe the wires at the ECU connector. The ground wire should read battery voltage and the signal and supply wires should read 5 volts. If the readings here are OK, then there is high resistance within the loom which will need to be identified and repaired. However, if you are still getting an incorrect reading, then turn the ignition off and disconnect the ECU connector to inspect it for corrosion and good terminal tension. If these checks don't show any faults, then you will need to conduct a final test which slightly differs depending on if your reading is higher or lower than the expected range. If you have a reading which is higher than expected when testing at the ECU connector, then you should also have a P0103. This higher reading will usually be caused by a short to voltage somewhere within the signal circuit. To identify where in the circuit this short lies, disconnect the ECU connector with the ignition off and use a terminal removal tool to remove the signal wire from the ECU connector. Plug the connector back in and turn the ignition back on whilst probing at the removed terminal. If any voltage is displayed here, then you can determine there is a short to voltage in the wiring loop, which will need to be repaired. Find out the best practices for how to repair damaged wiring by watching our video, which we will link down below. However, if you have identified there is a short within the wiring, then you should also check that it hasn't damaged the ECU. To do this, move the probe from the removed terminal to the corresponding pin on the ECU. If the reading is still higher than expected, then there is likely a fault with both the wiring and the ECU, which will need to be remanufactured. Click the pop-up on screen to send it in to us. If you have a P0102 fault code and experienced a reading lower than the expected range whilst testing at the ECU, then you likely have a short to ground or high resistance in either the wiring or ECU. To test where in the circuit the fault lies, again remove the terminal of the affected wire from the ECU connector. Plug it back in, turn the ignition on and retest at the ECU. If the reading is now good, then the short is within the loom from the ECU to the sensor and will need to be repaired. However, if the reading is still low, then there is an internal fault within the ECU which will need to be rebuilt. To confirm the bad reading is only within the ECU, complete a continuity test between the affected terminal at the sensor connector and battery negative. If any continuity is displayed here, then there is a fault within the wiring loom which has in turn caused damage to the ECU. If this is the case, then both the loom and ECU will need repairing. Click here to get yours remanufactured today. And that's that. You should now be able to identify the cause of your mass airflow sensor fault codes. If you have completed all the checks in this video and think the ECU is at fault, 
Then why not confirm it by sending your unit in to us? We can test your ECU and remanufacture any faults found to get you back on the road as quick as a flash. Visit our website, ecutesting.com for more information. But for now, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and ask any math related questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon.